Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. I do greet you in the name of Jesus and with the joy of Jesus today, thanking God for another day, another chance for us to meet together in this particular forum. I just thank and praise God for everybody who's with us, and let us go before the throne of grace right now in prayer. Amen. In the name of Jesus, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we do thank you for this day, God. We thank you for your sovereignty. We thank you for your sufficiency. God, we rest in you. All our help and our, all our hope is in you today, God. In the name of Jesus. Now, have your way as we go through this, this time, this segment of wonder, uh, wisdom and wonder uh, from your word, God. In the name of Jesus, speak to our hearts. Teach us what you want us to know, God. Show us, Lord, reveal to us from your word, which you would have us gather out of this setting today, Father. In the name of Jesus, we lift up all who are with us, those who desire to be with us and for some good reason cannot be with us today, God. In the name of Jesus. Father, I just thank you for this forum, uh, for sharing your word. Thank you for making a way. Thank you for the this, uh, this uh, venue, uh, Lord, that... Uh, um, that allows this to happen uh, now be glorified in our sharing in Jesus' strong name amen thank god for those who are joining us uh, who are letting other people know to join in amen it's all that god may be glorified that's all that this is about that he may be glorified and when he is glorified amen then his people are edified his people are built up his people are strengthened amen his people are renewed Amen. His spirit is quickened within us. So I bless God for all of you today. Thank God. Thank God. Let us know you're with us. If that's at all possible, uh, pray for this means of, of sharing the word of God. And uh, I just thank God for, for everybody and for this particular day. Amen. Uh, I, and I'm because I'm not so savvy on these things, I will share that our... Uh, uh, theme uh, uh, that under which we, we are sharing today is this God knows me and you or you and me whichever way you want to say God knows me and you and our scriptural foundation is Psalm 139 verse 14 and from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 25 verses 14 through 30 God knows me and you amen uh, this is really uh, just a word of encouragement. It's really a word of encouragement. Um, uh, so much of Christendom uh, has um, begun to flow uh, with the world, and many in Christendom um, argue that we have to uh, adopt uh, the, the ways of the world. Uh, but... Um, one of the ways of the world is is a way of competition, uh, the the way of um, outdoing, the way of uh, being the best, being better than somebody else, um, and uh, uh, that comes that smacks right against Christian growth and development uh, because competition does not allow consensus and if you and I are going to reach consensus if we're going to teach consensus if we're going to believe consensus that means that that we have to come together and reason and let the Holy Spirit speak to us and lead us and guide us until we we all 100% agree on how things go forth uh, competition hinges on um, somebody's got to win somebody's got to lose that's more the spirit of compromise. Um, somebody's got it, somebody doesn't have it. Somebody's worthy, somebody's not worthy. Well, uh, that really isn't the, the way of the Lord. Um, and so what we have to learn to do, what we have to learn to, uh, what we have to learn and embrace and uh, employ and share and encourage other people to live by is, is look, um, uh, God made us all in his image and uh, but he 
as alike as we are, he, he also didn't use a cookie cutter. He didn't make every one of us to be exactly alike, to have the same strengths and the same um, weaknesses, to have the same assets and the same liabilities. He made every one of us in his image. And sometimes people who uh, uh, may tend to think that we're, we're a notch above somebody else be <laughs> because we're strengthened in a particular way or because uh, um, you know we are gifted in a particular way um, but that that's really not uh, so God knows me and you amen he knows me and you he knows you and me uh, glory to God and he wants to get the glory out of us both out of us all amen uh, we just have to not hinder that process by uh, fostering things that encourage uh, uh, competition, that encourage us trying to outshine one another or whatever. Uh, amen. Um, we, we've got to uh, seek the Lord and, all th and know how he sees us. Amen. Know how he sees us. So this 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 uh, passage of, passage of scripture in Psalm 139. God bless all of you. I see you signing in. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. From up north, down south, middle of the state, northern U.S. Amen. I just thank God for everybody. Amen. Uh, in Psalm 139, verse 14, the scripture reads, "I will praise thee, for I am fearfully." And wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. And that my soul knoweth right well. Glory to God. I will praise thee. Hallelujah. I'm in touch with how you see me. I'm in touch with you, the, the reality that you know me. And, and out of that I will praise you. I'm not comparing myself or trying to be somebody else. Because uh, you know me, you know how you made me, you know the giftings in me, you know, uh, you know everything about me. Uh, and, and the psalmist says, I will praise thee. And then he goes on to make this powerful statement. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Hallelujah. When last have we affirmed that in the presence of God about ourselves? Amen. It is so easy, saints. It is so easy to uh, wear ourselves out um, and and we when we fail when we mess up when we fall short yeah we ought to uh, feel bad there ought to be remorse there ought to be godly sorrow we ought to repent still the psalmist says David says I am fearfully and wonderfully made glory to God I'm not like the king before me I'm not like the king after me I'm not like a king 50 years from now. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. How, can we uh, affirm that about ourselves? Or are we locked in to comparing ourselves to somebody else or allowing what other people say to make us feel poorly about ourselves? This is about understanding our image. We are made in the image of God. Imagi, imago Dei. We are in the image of God. We are in the image of God. This is about self-image. This really isn't uh, so much just about self-esteem. Because self-esteem can kind of go off the, the deep end. But our self-image. Do I, do I understand the image? Do I understand that God's character goes into all of creation? I, I may not activate it. I may not respond to it. I may not act responsibly with it. Amen. But he, he deposited his character in his creation. Amen. And, and, and often um, uh, uh, conditions, circumstances in life will, will uh, cause us to, um, to uh, struggle with feelings of worthlessness or, or incompetence. And, and all of those sorts of things. But uh, let me tell you, I'm telling you, even in the midst of failure, you are, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Now that may seem like a contradiction in the very terms I am speaking.
resilience. We will never embrace a comeback. We will never embrace rising above things if we cannot remind ourselves that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are fearfully and wonderfully. I didn't make myself. The Lord made me. The Lord made you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God has something special in mind when you came along. He has something unique in mind when you came along. He has something great in mind when you came along. Don't lose that. Don't lose that. Following a, a cookie cutter mentality where you just got to be just like uh, uh, everybody else and you got to say it just like everybody else and you walk. Got to walk just like everybody. You got you to say hallelujah just like everybody. No, 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 no. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You got to know that. You got to embrace that. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God did not make you and say oops. He did not make me and say oops. Oh, man. Need to put this one back in the oven. No, 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 no. The psalmist says, I will praise, I'm going to praise God. I'm going to celebrate God who created me for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Then he goes on to wrap up the verse. Marvelous are thy works. Marvelous. You are a work of God. And the Holy Bible says you're marvelous. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. If you really want to know how God sees you, don't look to the left, don't look to the right, don't look before you, and don't look behind you. Look up. Search his word. If you want to know how God assesses you, how God values you. The psalmist says, I will bless thee, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Well, that's a, that's powerful. That's powerful. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Hallelujah. Marvelous are thy works. Marvelous are thy works. Hallelujah. And that my soul knoweth right well. Well, I need to get in touch with this for appropriating uh, better understanding how the Lord sees me and that he knows me. And I also need to appropriate this after I get in touch with that so that I can appropriately uh, relate to other folk. Amen. I, I just can't celebrate that I am fearfully and wonderfully made and believe that somebody else isn't. Opportunities and, and all of that for me, but not for somebody else. The child of his. Amen. But I've got to understand it with me first. So I I need to do that 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 you you need to know that you are not. I need to know that I am not what somebody says. We are who God says. He knows me. He knows you. That's the wonder of God. And we may say, well, how can he know me? How could the psalmist even say he knows me and, and then say I'm fearfully and wonderfully made? Wasn't David in touch with his own wretchedness? Yes. The wonder of God, the wonder of God is that we, we can come to understand how wretched we are and still see the righteousness of God. His hand on us, his purpose for us. Great work of the Holy Ghost it called resilience. Being able to, to bounce back by the power of the Holy Ghost after a setback. Why? Because we are in touch with the reality that God knows you. He knows me. He knows. So we can't resign ourselves to, to be who God, to ignore who God made us to be. Amen. We have to embrace that and celebrate that and realize that he made us in his image. He deposited that in us. 
man, I, I, I know I'm running the risk of, of being, uh, I am being redundant. I'm saying the same thing over and over, but I'm saying it because it's important. I'm saying it because it's critical. I'm saying it because saints are saints. Which has been um, uh, uh, dictated. We've uh, allowed the dictation of somebody other than the Lord or other people than uh, people other than the Lord to, to, to inform who we are. No, 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 no. The wonder of God is he knows. He knows every liability. He knows every downside. But when we yield ourselves to him, the work of the Holy Ghost is that he, he causes us to focus on those things that God has purposed us and created us to do. Hence, we uh, notice this passage in the 25th chapter of, of Matthew. Matthew chapter 25, uh, uh, the parable of the loaned money. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants, God calling his own, uh, he, we are his children, all of us who 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 own him, all of us who have uh, established reconciled relationship with him through Jesus Christ. Amen. We belong to him. Uh, for uh, the kingdom of heaven is, is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own service and delivered unto them his goods. <laughs> he delivered unto them his goods. So any goods we hold, we hold in trust. Any goods we hold, any gifts, any talents, any abilities, whatever it is, we hold in trust. It's not ours. It belongs to the one who gave it to us. And unto one he gave five talents, to, and to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability. And straightway he took his journey. Well, why didn't he just give everybody five? Why didn't he just get, give everybody two? Well, why didn't he just give everybody one? Because God knows us. He knows me. He knows you. This, this master knew his servants. He knew who could handle what. He didn't put unrealistic expectations on. On the one to whom he gave one or two. He didn't say well. I, 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 I know you can only handle two. But I'm going to give you five. I know you can only handle one. But I'm going to give you two. Or I'm going to give you five. No, 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 no. He knows us. So he entrusts to us. That which he knows we can handle. If we depend on him. Now. Because he knows us and he deposits these gifts with us, it is up to us then to uh, make the most of what our master has deposited in us or entrusted to us. Then the word goes on to, the, goes on to say, Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them over five talents. He had five, went and traded did whatever he did, made five more. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. Had two, gained two. Interestingly, the one who had five and gained five, and the one who had two and gained two, had the exact same degree of success. The one who had five and gained five, and the one who had two and gained two, each gained 100 fold. 100, all they had plus another 100% more. You see. So the one who had five couldn't say, well, I, I outdid the one who had two. Because the one who had two had the same degree of success as the one who had five. Now, if the one who had two had been given the five, he would have been overwhelmed. He would not have been productive. He would have suffered loss because his master gave to them according to their several, their meaning, their individual abilities. He knows us. 
He knows us. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. But he who had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Before, behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. And his Lord says, Well done, good, thou good and faithful servant. Thou, thou hast been faithful of a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. had received two talents came and said lord thou deliverest unto me two talents behold i have gained two other talents beside them his lord said unto him well done good and faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things i will make thee rule over many enter thou into the joy of the lord check it out verse 21 and verse 23 are identical one servant whom God knew could handle five, brought the five plus five. One whom God knew could handle two, brought the two plus two. And they both got the exact, the identical response from their Lord. I hope this is making sense. God knows me and you. He knows what we can handle. He knows what to entrust to each of us. So that we not, we not, may not, we need not be, uh, allow ourselves to be made feel badly because by anybody else, nor do we need to envy what anybody else does. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew Thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast, hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast what is thine. This fellow says, I knew you were hard. Now, I think it would have been better for him if he just told Um, But he, he went and hid. He, he did nothing. The Lord knew he could handle the one. He knew he was capable of, of being efficient and proficient with the one. He knew that. But he came in making excuses. And he caps his excuse off saying, You gave me one, you're getting one back. Here's the Lord's answer in verse 26. If you compare verse 26 to verses 21, 23, you'll see that uh, his Lord became upset with him. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. The other two heard good and faithful. This one here is wicked and slothful. Thou knewest that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not straw. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchange, that at least you could have invested it. And then at my coming... I should have received mine with user. I would have received at least the one with some interest. You could have handled that. I know you can handle it because I know your ability. I know you can handle it. Take for, therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall it be given and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall it be taken even away that which he hath, and cast the un there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The unprofitable servant. He wasn't unprofitable because he wasn't able. He was unprofitable because he wasn't productive. He did nothing with what his master knew he could handle. He knows me. He knows you. He's not set us up to compete. There's a little uh, song we l learned in fourth grade that uh, the teacher, my fourth grade teacher was my mother's fourth grade teacher also, Miss Blanche 
Thompson, Washington. And uh, she taught us this song called Brighten the Corner Where You Are. Yeah, don't get obsessed with what somebody else is doing over there. Or You can learn from them. We can be inspired by others. But don't get so caught up in that that you, you, you take what you've been given and bury it. Because you won't do it like somebody else. Let's brighten the corner where we are. I pray that this stirs somebody. I pray that this encourages somebody. I pray that somebody who's been feeling kind of bad about yourself and down hard on yourself. I really pray that you will experience renewal and um, and a refreshing from this word, from this, this time, this wisdom and wonder in God's word. Uh, it is a wonder that he deposits his good in any of us. It is a wonder that he comes back to reclaim what he has put in all of us and and he knows what each of us can do the psalmist says i will praise thee for i am fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous are thy works and that i know right well hallelujah he knows me and you find peace in that find comfort in that hallelujah even on the down times, even on the down days, he knows you. Even when things aren't as productive as you want them to be, or as I would want them to be, he knows you and he knows me. Thanks be unto God. And he will give us sufficient time to be productive with those uh, talents. He's entrusted to us. Brothers and sisters, God loves you. He loves you right where you are. And he'll love you, you and me to where we need to be. Be encouraged from this little segment in God's word. He, God knows me and you. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this sharing today, Lord. I thank you for everybody who joined us. Thank you for those who were free to let us know they were with us, Lord. I thank you for those who may not be able to uh, to say anything, but they're listening in. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that the very power, the life of your word will reach hearers far and near, God. I pray that folk who have been struggling with their own self-image, Lord, struggling because um, they didn't look right to themselves, they didn't seem right to themselves, that they may uh, find the truth of your word, that they are fearfully and wonderfully made, God, and that your works are marvelous, God. In the name of Jesus, settle that in our spirits today, God. Settle that in our spirits today, God. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, if you settle that in our spirits, the de de depression has to go. If you settle that in our spirits, poor self-esteem has to go. If you settle that in our spirits, restlessness has to go. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, have your power. Move by, have your way and move by your power today, God. In the name of Jesus, stir your people, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Oh, God, the one who is feeling like giving up, stir them and remind them, Lord, that they still have talents that have to be worked out, God. In the name of Jesus, that they may have some. Jesus, Lord, to those who are just weary, God, we, we, we pray your word, Lord, your weary, word says do not reason if we faint not. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, I speak, Lord, just a shaking among your people today, God. That, remind, that reminds us, Lord, that, that whatever we do for you, whatever we do with the talents uh, with which we've been blessed by you, Lord, that you will give full account of it, God, in the name of Jesus, that we don't have to try to be like anybody else or be anybody else, but we just need to be who you already know we are because you made us fearfully and wonderfully, God, in the name of Jesus the one who's been afflicted with, with name calling, Lord, in the name of Jesus, the, to the one who's been uh, afflicted with, with labeling God, in the name of Jesus, speak to their spirits today, God, encourage their hearts today, God, in the name of, oh God, in the name of Jesus, break every chain, 
Oh God, break every chain. Set your people free today, God. Oh God, cause them to know that you know their name, God, and they are we are who you call us, not who some anybody else calls us, God. In the name of Jesus, have your way today, God. Oh, encourage hearts today, God. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your peace that passes all understanding today, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray right now for the one that's near as hell, for the unconcerned, the unconvicted, Lord, the unconverted, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray that something will happen today that will cause them to realize that they need to be saved. Oh, God, we pray for the backsliders, Lord, that they would hear you calling their names and that they'll follow that voice, follow your voice back to you, God. In the name of Jesus, and we pray for a strengthening for the saints today, God. In the name of Jesus, strengthen us, Lord, where we are weak and build us up, where time and conditions have torn us down, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, and we say as your word says, we will, then we will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted unto you, God. Be glorified. We thank you and we praise you today, God. In the strong name of Jesus the Christ, we pray and we believe. Amen. God bless you, saints. Always enjoy our time together. Love everybody. Love everybody. God bless you.